As the sun starts to set here in the Puerto Madero Park, the backdrop of the third round of the Formula E race today, uh, we thought we should have a bit of a catch up on what has been a well, a superb day of racing. It's been a busy it, day, Mark? hasn't it? Yeah. Where I to mean, start? well, <laughs> let's start right here because we're outside the Cheetah team, and I think today was a real mix of two halves, a race of two halves for these guys because obviously John Eric Verne. John Eric Verne you know, had a good day, didn't he? He ended up on the podium, he's taking home some champagne. That's a good result. Such a good result for him. It and is. also, you know, he's had probably not the best start of the season. The first two races, the team made quite a few mistakes. He's got the pace, but now he's actually had the opportunity to prove it. He's looking very strong in qualifying, but he's got the energy management issues, I think, still in the race, which he's got to overcome. But I'm sure he will, he's still learning. Uh, Ma, on the other hand, is really struggling a little bit. I think that was a day to forget for him. Jaguar. Where do we start with them? Well, Mitch Evans, a fantastic starting position for him. Highest starting position that Jaguar Racing have seen so far this season. He started the grid from P7, but it wasn't the best start for Adam Carroll, was it? No, he struggled to get off the line. Um, we don't quite know what the issue was yet, some sort of electrical problem. Eventually, of course, he got going, but he, pulled, he brought out the full course yellows as a result. Um, what they did tell me, the team, was that as a result of that, his race was obviously ruined. He was at the back of the pack, but they managed to use the afternoon, really trying some different setups, and, and they've learnt an awful lot, they said. So. They've managed to salvage something out of what could have been a pretty disastrous weekend. Now, what happened with Mitch Evans? Did he end up getting some form of grid penalty? He did. I've got down here that he got a five-second penalty for speeding under those full course yellows. So, yeah, that was a shame for him, I think, wasn't that it? That is a shame. Probably something because he's uh, still a rookie in this championship. Right, well, we're standing outside the next EV garage. What a great start for both Oliver and Nelson. I think they started from P4 and P5 on the grid. Yeah, they did. I think that's the closest they've been. And particularly for um, for Oliver, out qualifying his teammate, that's a great result for him. I was talking to his dad earlier, who's really kind of promising. He's got some really positive thoughts about the way this is going for him. He says that Oliver is enjoying this there massively. So that's a real good sign. I love how Oliver's dad comes to all the races yeah, though. Yeah. And he is the spitting image of Ooh. Oliver. It's brilliant to <laughs> see the, the father-son <laughs> bond. Uh, at the Formula e, uh, pit lane. Now, here we are outside the MS Amlin Andretti garage. They're packing away fast and furious. Actually, Antonio Felix da Costa is there. Should we, should oh, we get grab a him, qu grab quick, him. quick try? Grab him. Antonio, can we grab a quick word? We're just doing a bit of a wrap up of uh, how the day has gone. Maybe you'd like to summarize in your words how today went. <laughs> My day was a little bit of a, a snowball of bad things. You know, it just kept getting worse. Um, you know, I made a mistake at the beginning of the day with that big shunt, which didn't help the boys. We, you get on the back foot for the rest of the day. Nonetheless, you keep positive and we kept stopping on track with little issues with the electronics of the car. So again, you know, just adding up. Then in qualifying, I made a mistake again and, and touch, just touched the wall and didn't do a proper quality lap. So, you know, we, it, was, it was tough, tough until the race started, but we were confident for the race. Uh, but then it didn't really work out. We, were, we didn't have the pace, we were slow, the heat affected us a little bit, so we had to play it, play it a bit safe. And uh, yeah, but I think they, bad days like this, it's good for us to you know, kick ourselves <laughs> in the butt. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's know, all about getting the track forward. time, isn't it, on these street circuits, and yeah, you just you didn't know, have that. Everything is so compact that if you, you do a mistake at 8.30 in the morning, you're gonna feel it at 5 p.m. at the end of the race. Yeah. So, you need to, you know, I said I did say it on on Friday, but and I didn't do it. You know, you need a clean day, and I didn't do that, so you know, I paid the price. Well, Nikki, you, we gotta you, go. You've got the pace, so we're looking forward to seeing you at the top of that grid in Mexico. Cheers, Antonio. Thanks, Antonio. I think he's such an awesome driver. He's and a top, such top man. A great character as well in he the is. paddock. Always smiling and cheerful, no matter what the result has been. So here we are at the Venturi team so. uh, with Stefan Sarazan and Mauro Engel. So Venturi, I think they had a sort of mixed day. I think that um, obviously Engel had a bit of a disaster. The car had uh, some sort of battery shutdown in qualifying, which was disastrous for them. And they had the same issue again in the race. So that was a real shame. On the other side of the garage, Sarazan had a pretty decent drive. They are still struggling with some energy management efficiency issues, but the team have told me they got some big updates coming from Mexico, so they've got high hopes moving forward. Well, that's forward. exciting because, you know, Venturi, they are electric vehicle manufacturers. They should be ahead of the game, really, in this championship. And I'd say we're still yet to perhaps see, you know, their, their, their sort of cards on the table. Well, they're learning a lot, which is what the team yeah. has said earlier. So that's a positive they can take away from the weekend. Now, this is a team that everyone's been talking a lot. Mahindra, with obviously uh, debutant Felix Rosenquist, who is such 
an awesome a rising street star, isn't he? circuit driver, <laughs> isn't he? Um, yeah, he, he is. He's a real star, and it's only a matter of time before he, we see him on the top step of that podium. I've got no doubt. But today was a really difficult one, of course. He had uh, a BMS error, error on his dash, a battery management system, and that was what uh, meant that he didn't get off the off the line in the beginning of the race. Uh, sorry, off the pit stop with his uh, with his second car. And of course, when that happens, you know your race is your pretty heart much just over. Sinks, doesn't it? When you see them sitting there, because yeah. he, he had a brilliant pit stop. It was fast. He was going to come out. You know, at the top half. It was of the all grid, looking good, wasn't and then it? It all went horribly wrong. Dragon. Uh, now, uh, I the spoke dragon to dragon rivalry. We've got to love a bit of Loic Duval and Jerome <laughs> D'Ambrosio rivalry. Always pushing each other to the limit, but maybe pushing each other a little too hard. Well, sometimes. do you know what? Do you know what? I think it's great that the team allowed them to race today because yeah. we got some great racing between those two. They pushed each other wheel to wheel. I spoke to the team manager earlier, who you know could barely watch, of course, because he's got his two cars on the brink of disaster. But you know that's great. We want to see them race, don't we? It made for a good show for us. And I think, um, you know, I think he said to me that they they did both fight hard towards the end. They had pretty decent um, temperature management in the battery. Um, so it was a kind of a sort of standard race, I guess, for them. It wasn't it wasn't incredible, but it certainly wasn't a disaster. Um, and as I say, I think real fair play to them for for letting them race because um, getting towards the end there, it's very easy to have teams really struggling with energy, having to really manage it, and just. Yeah almost settling for whatever they've got and those two kept fighting all the way didn't and they? speaking of uh, battery management i mean mahindra again i mean i think we got to halfway through the race and both felix uh, rosenquist and nick heidfeld had about six or seven percent left in the battery and everyone else was on sort of two or three <laughs> percent and i know they've been really really working on it because dilberg said he was the, the team manager the team principal that he's basically hasn't slept for the last <laughs> three weeks since marrakesh because he knew that he could win that race. Yeah. You know, Felix obviously came third. They had a bit of a, an energy management issue towards the end, so he, he gave up the win um, to Sebastian Bermi. But obviously, they've now got that energy management sorted. I think he's definitely one to watch. And look, we're here at, at Virgin now, and we've got to say something about Sam because you know the Brits all are always behind Sam Bird, aren't they? They always want him to do well, and he, and he had a disaster. Um, I spoke again to these guys. I mean, just look at his cars. I don't know if you can see his cars over there. Wheels pointing in opposite directions. Oh, well, yes, here we are. That is the you sign of a, a bad close, day. Closer look at that. That's a bad day at the office, isn't it? And actually, it wasn't just that car. That car there that you're looking at was the car that eventually put him out of the race. The other car on the right-hand side with the engineers that are looking around the back of it at the moment also has damage because Jerome D'Ambrosio made contact with him and put him into the wall. That was his first car. So... His race was really compromised right from the beginning and it didn't end up being a good day. What happened actually when he did crash his second car? Uh, I think he was pushing for, um, he was pushing for fastest lap. Um, so he went back out even though his race was, was compromised yeah. and at, some, at one point in the race he actually had the fastest lap, didn't he? So I think he was just pushing too hard and unfortunately it ended, uh, as it you Al saw Adam there. Was Carroll? Did he get the fastest lap in the end? Uh, Rosenquist. Oh, it was Rosenquist. It was, oh, our enough, rising star. Our rising star indeed. Now right. here we are at Audi Sport Abd Schaffler. Lucas Degrassi, I wonder if he's around. He seems off to be a busy. bit of action back there. He's probably off busy, busy uh, drinking his champagne. champagne. I think we should go and find him. Do you know? Do you know what? I spoke to uh, Daniel Apt, and and you know he finished P7 today. But from where he started, that was actually a, a wonderful comeback, and he's the happiest I've ever seen him today. He was absolutely <laughs> beaming from ear to ear. Feels like it was a, a wonderful weekend. Daniel's you know? always quite a happy chappy. <laughs> I think. I think you know, obviously being teammates with Lucas, who pretty much always outperforms yeah, him. Yeah. You, you know, you, you've got to take the small wins, haven't you? Absolutely. And, so and, I, right and I must just say, we have now heard that the stewards have uh, decided there's no further action because um, he was under investigation, Lucas Degrassi, for an unsafe pit stop release. Uh, and the decision of that is there's no further action. So the result stands. Well, that's good. I He's think. very pleased. Those guys are very pleased as well. Um, there's a man behind us, though, or his team certainly behind us, who probably wouldn't have minded him being bumped back a bit further. The Renault team. The Renault team, I mean, again, they're kind of unstoppable, aren't they? I mean, Sebastian Wemi, incredible, incredible driver. Yeah. And then he's behind the wheel of the Renault powertrain. I mean, he's three back-to-back -back wins now, making history in Formula E. He's Is anyone going to beat him? He's incredible. <laughs> and even the team now are sort of like, you know, wow. He's, <laughs> they, they didn't expect this level of performance. And it's him, they say, that is bringing the car to that level that we're seeing of performance. It's not just the car. It's the combination of the two. 
Um, I guess slightly difficult for, for Nico. He's still got a decent result today, and as a team, I think they're quite happy. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was a fourth, a fourth position again for Nico, so I they know. basically matched each other on the result. That's right. <laughs> but the, the big story today is that uh, Sebastian Buemi disappears off into the distance, not only in the race, but in this championship. Yeah, so what's going to happen in Mexico? Can't only wait to find time out. will tell. Well, thanks for joining us. That wraps up everything here in Puerto Madero Park in Buenos Aires. We look forward to seeing you in Mexico City. Bye bye.